As all of you know, yesterday, Mr. Robert R. Gilruth, the director of the Space Task Group, announced that three of the seven astronauts had been selected to begin specialized work with the spacecraft and with the people that would be involved in the initial manned Mercury flights. Seven guys competing for the first job, or whatever that turned out to be. Seven guys going for that one job. So on the one hand, there was a sense of friendliness and maybe in some support, but uh, on the other hand, hey, I hope you rest of you guys are happy because I'm going to make the first flight. Bob walked in, closed the door, and uh, was very matter of fact. He said, well, you know, we've, uh, we've got to decide who's going to make the first flight, and uh, I don't want to pinpoint publicly at this stage one individual. He want, within the organization, I want everyone to know that uh, we will designate the first flight and the second flight and a backup pilot. But uh, beyond that, uh, we won't make any public decisions. So he said, uh, Shepard gets the first flight, Grissom gets the second flight, and Glenn is the backup for both of these two suborbital missions. We pulled up in front of the launch pad. Of course, it was dark. Uh, the liquid oxygen was was uh, venting out from the uh, from the redstone. Searchlights all over the place, and I remember saying to myself, "Well, I'm not going to see this redstone again." And you know, pilots love to go out and kick the tires, and it was sort of like reaching out and kicking the tires on the redstone. Because I stopped and looked at it, you know, to look back and, and up uh, at this beautiful rocket and uh, thought, well, okay, Buster, let's go and get the job done. The clock is started. Yes, sir, reading you loud and clear. This is Freedom 7. The fuel is go. 1.2 G. Kevin at 14 PSI. Oxygen is go. I was surprised that the liftoff, that the ignition of the redstone and the liftoff were as smooth as they were. I really had expected more noise and more vibration. Uh, fortunately, we had provided enough padding around the uh, earphones of the helmet, so the noise was not a problem. And the old redstone itself was smooth enough so that uh, it was a very pleasant liftoff. On the periscope, what a beautiful view. I'll cover over Florida, three to four tenths near the eastern coast. Obscure is up to Hatteras. But, uh, when I first looked from the instrument panel using a gyroscopic indication down to the periscope itself. I must admit, it sort of took my breath away. It was a beautiful view. All of a sudden, during the period of the middle of the weightlessness, I realized that somebody was going to ask me that question. <laughs> so. <laughs> so I said to myself, you'd better figure out an answer. <laughs> Seriously, as we have said before, uh, during the short periods of weightlessness that we've experienced during our training period. It's quite a pleasant sensation. 
particularly so after the accelerations of the booster ride. We find that we have no difficulty in maneuvering ourselves and controlling ourselves. And it, it, it all in all, uh, really is at this point, certainly, given us uh, no difficulty at all. made ready for landing somewhere in the uh, altitude, about 5,000 feet altitude. Uh, by this I mean that I opened the face plate of the helmet, uh, took off the hose which provides the sealing gas, oxygen for the uh, face plate seal. I loosened the, took off the chest strap and I removed my knee restraints. Uh, the reason I did this was to allow myself a little more freedom of action in case I had to make some rapid maneuvers after landing. The uh, landing was somewhere between 10 and 12 G, as has been indicated by our records. It certainly wasn't any more uncomfortable than a catapult shot on an aircraft carrier. And therefore, I want to uh, again express my congratulations uh, to Alan Shepard. Uh, we're uh, very proud of him and uh, this decoration, which has gone from the ground up here. Yeah. <laughs> I am very very mindful at this moment of the honor which has been bestowed upon me, an honor which is really one which should go to the hundreds of people who made my flight possible. We have been working approximately two years, as you know, on a devoted effort to put a man in space. And it is really to these hundreds of people that the accolades of today should go.